It is time for Captain Iron Pants to meet his match, Wedgie Power versus Wedgie Power. They both give wedgies, except this person is much more evil. The Wedgie Woman. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Goji Metzel in 1994, and I'm here to review Ga uh, Captain Underpants and the Wrath of the Wicked Wedgie Woman, the fifth epic novel by Dave Pilkey. Action, terror, and laughs. So, let's dive into it. So, the story begins with Miss Gribble actually retiring, which when I first read the book, I was surprised. So, <clears throat> they were forced, all the students were forced to make like cards and everything. Well, George and Harold decide to come up with a plan and make her a comic book. And it was called, well, the same title as the actual book, Captain Underpants and the Wrath of the Wicked Wedgie Woman. And <clears throat> what? When Miss Ribble finds out about the comic, she, sn she snaps it out of their hands, rips it, and says that imagination is like banned at the school or something like that. And they just earned their one-way ticket to the, a detention or the principal's office. And <clears throat> George and Harold, I guess they, well, go to detention or the principal's office. When they were at the principal's office or Mr. Krupp's office, Miss Anthrope, who's uh, filling out uh, the, the week or the Friday memo of what's happening on the week, they, uh, Miss Anthrope wants the boys to make, like, print off many of those while she's, uh, going to wash them or something. And Mr. Crop, I believe, is not in his office, so... So the boys have a prank. They, they go onto Miss Anthrope's, uh, computer and retype the entire thing as a whole. From, uh, lunch, from a food fight to a football practice into the... In the teacher's lounge, it's pretty chaotic. So, the party came, and all, all uh, Miss Ribble pretty much ripped up every single card that she received, and she even had to send send a a little boy into the corner because he gave her a card that had like a smiley face on the sun or something like that. And when Mr. Krupp, oh wait, I think I skipped over something. All right, uh, all right. <clears throat> so they hand to, all right, I think I skipped something. Sorry about that. I, all right, they, George and Harold, when they're done printing, they go, go to hand out all of them, all of the notes and everything. But Mr. Krupp finds them and wait, <clears throat> I think I skipped over something else. Uh, nope. Okay, Mr. Krupp finds the two boys, and Harold says that they're just, like, handing out the notes to all the kids, and he asks the, uh, Mr. Krupp to sign a card for them, and they, and it says, uh, it says nothing, but Mr., they just want Mr. Krupp to be the first one, but Harold pulls out a prank that'll eventually ruin the entire thing. So... When, <clears throat> so a few days later, Mr. Kraft finds them out outside, changing the letters on the sign. Then they, uh, they find, they say that, well, uh, they can't like deliver the card. But Mr. Krupp, uh snatches them out of the, snatches the the uh, the card out of Harold's hand, which all which says spoiler alert, or I think the entire reviews are spoiler alerts. So, uh. Will you marry me? Signed Mr. Krupp. And when when it they go to the party and this is where I accidentally skipped something and went to this part. Uh the the party begins and once again the, all the cars are ripped up and the boy is sent out for the same for the same reason I said earlier. And when Mr. Krupp gave the card to Miss Ribble uh, it said, you are one hot mama, and then everyone just like, ew, when Miss Ribble opened it up, uh, it said, will you marry me, signed Mr. Krupp. Mr. Krupp was in shock. 
He tried to say something. He tried to tell it was all a mistake, but all that came out was like he kind of like he kind of stuttered there and said like bu 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 kind of like that. Like he's trying to say something, but then the days went went and uh, they were planning the wedding on a uh, Saturday. And you know actually. Uh, who actually has school on Saturdays? I wonder. Huh. Like this video if you have school on Saturdays. Anyways. So the the wedding came. And everyone is there. Even Harold wore a tie for once. And I think this is the only time that Harold actually wore a tie. I think in the night. Did I, I'm not going to go into further detail. So... <clears throat> So the wedding happens and and they say, uh, Mr. Crop, do you take Miss Rebel to be your wife? And then all come and that all, and all comes out of Mr. Crop's mouth is blah 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 blah. And uh, Miss Rebel says no, basically just screaming on the top of her lungs. Uh, Mr. Miss Ribble says that uh, she doesn't want to marry Mr. Crop, but of her nose. But look at something. Alright, this is the page it appears on. Tell me what's wrong about it. Can't find it? Mr. Crop has the same exact nose design as Miss Ribble. So basically, Miss Ribble does not like his, uh, her nose, basically. So Mr. Crop, uh says that it was all George and Harold's fault, but the entire gymnasium looks at George and Harold, and if I were to look, be looking, alright, if everyone in my entire school were to look at me, I would be super embarrassed. Like, I would just, just look at nobody, I would make no eye contact with everybody while I'm just sweating, while I'm just sweating from my head to toes. Just not saying a word. Just frozen on my seat. Anyways, so uh, every so George and Harold say it's time to go. They run a, away from Miss Ribble, who's charging at them, and they keep destroying everything. She's strong, and it's revealed that she, she Miss Ribble is so strong, and she hasn't received her superpowers yet. She's able to knock pillars down for darn sake. Causing air food to fly everywhere. That is so crazy. And in fact, I think that 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 she's a superhero. That she can be a superhero by herself, huh? So a bunch of food and drinks land on the on the kids, and and let's just say, long story short, the wedding goes horribly wrong. And uh, the next day, Miss Ribble uh, orders. The two boys to the uh, their office and and they get F's and G's and apparently it's revealed that G's exist because they're a lower grade than F. So what do the two boys do? Just like Mr. Krupp, they they find the hypno ring and there it is. Well, the hypno ring in their treehouse. Harold th thought that Her uh, George got rid of that, but that was the instructions that they got rid of, not the ring itself. So, they the n then the next day, they go to hypnotize the, the uh, Miss Ribble, and apparently a message pops up saying that the company behind the hypno ring, uh, they s scientists say, or whatever, the... People who say it say that the hypno ring has an opposite effect on women instead of men. So whenever, so Mr. Krupp is male and he listens to every other commands. So it's Captain Underpants that he turns into. And instead of um, obeying George and Harold, she does the opposite. Like, I think they say don't turn to wedgie woman, but she turns into wedgie woman and she's super evil. So they're done hypnotizing her and they hope they can get good grades. But then the same night, Miss Rebel finds out about, like, the two Captain Underpants and the two boys and they're, they're in trouble. What will happen next? 
Find out on part two of Captain Underpants and the Wrath of the Wicked Wedging Woman. Action Chair Laughs, the fifth epic novel by Dave Pilkey Review. See you guys next time.